We got shirts on sale. Express your love for the Evolutions and the new channel rebrand with an Evolution t-shirt and hoodie. On sale now. Also, if you like anime, go check out our anime channel, Mystic Sage, for awesome anime content. And be sure to follow me on social media so you can stay caught up with the channels and me. Links will be in the description below. Welcome back to How Good Was a Pokemon In-Game. Today, we have Gardevoir, a very underrated Pokemon in the series. Before we actually look into how Gardevoir was though, let me get into how I will be analyzing it in the games first. I'll be taking how well Gardevoir does in important battles such as the rival, evil teams, gym leaders, etc. along with the moves it gets and the game availability. If you guys enjoyed this series and want more of it, let's crush 4,000 likes and vote for what Pokemon you guys want most in the comments below. Whatever comment gets the most upvotes will be the Pokemon we do next. Anyways, that's all out of the way now, let's hop into the history of Gardevoir from the in-game perspective. Our journey and tale start in the Hoenn region over on Route 102, where Wally was incredibly lucky, and we probably won't be. With a mere 4% rate, we'll be trotting in the grass for quite some time, but upon meeting our lovely level 3 Ralts, the grind begins. Upon reaching level 6, our Ralts will get confusion, and then by then, we're ready to take on most challenges in Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald. Throughout the journey, Ralts, and eventually Gardevoir, will be able to help us out against all of Roxanne's team thanks to special attacks against our physically defensive rock types, Brawly's team, Watson's Voltorb, and his Electric and Minetric in Emerald. Against Flannery and Norman, Gardevoir will be just above average. Against Winona, Gardevoir can be quite helpful thanks to Shockwave or Thunderbolt. Against Tate and Liza, Gardevoir will just do average as it is a psychic type. And lastly for the gym leaders, Gardevoir will do exceptionally well against Wallace or Juan with Thunderbolt or Shockwave. As for Team Aqua and Magma, well Gardevoir most certainly does well against the Team Aqua team with their Gold Bats and Sharpedoes thanks to Thunderbolt and can rough up camera ups from Team Magma of Psychic. For our rivals, Gardevoir will help with Brendan or May Swallow, Combuskin and Wilmer. This is of course thinking you picked up Trico from Professor Birch. For our other rival in these games, we have Wally, and for that Gardevoir will do best against Delcati, Altaria, and Roselia. Upon defeating Wally, we have the Elite Four and Champion. For that, we're gonna have to let Gardevoir sit out the fight against Sydney. No point in sending your second type against a Dark Type Master. Phoebe's team will be a bit easier than Sydney, but still a sticky situation seeing as her team is more effective against you than you are against her. Glacia has two Cilios and Walrein that Gardevoir can beat with a Swift Thunderbolt and two Glalie, which aren't super threatening. But they do, however, have Crunch and Shadow Ball, so watch out for that. Lastly, there's Drake of the Elite Four, and unfortunately Gardevoir isn't a fairy yet, so the matchup is just average. Psychic hits hard, but nothing exceptional. Finally, there's the champion, Steven Stone, in Ruby and Sapphire, and Wallace and Emerald. Wallace will fall quite easily to a Thunderbolt and Psychic, while Steven, on the other hand, is a bit tricky for Gardevoir. You'll do well against Skarmory with Thunderbolt, and potentially Armal, though, due to it having lesser special defense. Overall, in Hoenn, Gardevoir proves itself to be very good in most of the important battles across the game. Gardevoir gets a thumbs up in its introductory region. Next region on the analysis is Sinnoh and Pokemon Diamond, Pearl, and Platinum. In Pokemon Diamond and Pearl, Ralts cannot be found until you obtain the Poke Radar. But in Platinum, Ralts can be found on Route 208 and 209 at level 17 or 18. So we'll have our Curlia before we reach Fantina. From there on, Curlia and later Gardevoir will help us quite a bit as Fantina has a Haunter with the second type moves. However, being a ghost, Curlia will be weak to it as well. Beyond that, Gardevoir will be useful against Maylene's team, Crasher Wake's team with Magic Wave and Thunderbolt. Byron can be quite difficult, but if you have Focus Blast on the Velos in the apartment store to deal with him, then that will be fine. But uh, be careful on relying on that 70% accuracy. Candace is a pretty average match with Psychic, as it will do quite alright against the Bomb of Snow and Pile of Swine, while Shadow Ball can help with Frost Slash, and technically you can use Focus Blast for Sneasel too, but that's not the safest. Lastly, of the gym leaders, we have Volkner, and for him the matchup is very average. Gardevoir doesn't have an exception matchup, but it doesn't have a bad one either. For Team Galactic, like most other evil teams, Guard does well against the Poison types. Not too great against the Dark types like Skuntic and Weavile, and Gardevoir is not too happy fighting Bronzong. For Cyrus, however, a mixture of Thunderbolt and Focus Blast should do it, but again, you have to watch out for the Dark types. Before heading into the Elite Four, we have to face off against Barry, and against him, Gardevoir does well against his entire team except for Snorlax. However, this is only if Barry started with Chimchar. His Thoraptor also has U-Turn, Floatzel has Crunch, Heracross has Night Slash, and Rose Red has Shadow Ball, so those are moves you should be aware of. And of course, after defeating Barry, that leaves the Elite Four. Starting with Aaron the Bug User, where the only utility we will get out of Gardevoir is possibly his Heracross. Against Bertha, it's pretty neutral. Against Flint, you can use Gardevoir against his entire team except for Houndoom, and while getting the super effective hit on Infernape. For the final member of the Elite Four, we have Lucian and his second types, which if you have Shadow Ball, that can be found over on Route 210. You'll have a relatively easy time with this whole team. And of course, at the end, we have the champion herself, Cynthia. Seeing as we're looking at her 
Platinum team, Gardevoir will do well against Roserade, Togekiss, Lucario, and Milotic. So overall, Gardevoir is really good in Sinnoh too. Its base 80 speed can be proven a problem at times, but seeing how early you can find Rolts in Platinum, it's definitely worth your while. Another approved region for me. Rolts in Heart Gold and Soul Silver is a Swarm Encounter, which is only available after obtaining the Radio Card, which can be obtained by completing the Power Plant side quest in the Kanto Post game, then heading over to the Lavender Town Tower. This means Gardevoir at its best will only be available for Janine and out, but that's not to say that Gardevoir isn't worth it. With a bit of extensive training to catch up to the rest of the party you've been playing with up until that moment, Gardevoir will do well against Janine's whole team of Psychic Stab, Brock's entire team with Energy Ball, Blaine's team can be a bit tricky with his 3 Overheat White Herb Pokemon, but thankfully Gardevoir has a respectable Special Defense stat and a strong Psychic to return back. Lastly for the Kanto Gym Leaders, Gardevoir has a solid matchup against Blue with a mix of Psychic, Shadow Ball, Thunder and Energy Ball. With those moves, you'll take down Exeggutor, Rhydon, Gyarados, Machamp, and Pidgeot. That being said, Blue's Arcanine will also get hit pretty hard with a second from Gardevoir. Finally, the big boss battle of Heart Gold and Soul Silver being Red. Gardevoir does really well against Red's teams, actually. I will place Thunderbolt the deal of Charizard, Blastoise, and Lapras. Second for Venusaur and Pikachu, I suppose. And then watch out for Snorlax, who is just a bit too specially tanky for Gardevoir. Overall, it is very late for Gardevoir when you get it, but for the battles you end up using it, Gardevoir does a really solid job. I would, however, say pass in Heart Gold and Soul Silver due to how late you pick it up. Now, unfortunately, the Rolled Slime is not available in either of the Gen 5 games, so we're going to have to jump straight over to Kalos with Pokemon X and Y. Whereas I'm sure most of you know, Mega Gardevoir is the champion's ace. Not that it means anything special, but it does look promising. Now, first off, we need to find Rolts on Route 4, right after Santaloon City. Go into any flower patch, and you will have a 5% chance to find Rolts. And with the addition of the Fairy Tapping, comes a few new both strengths and weaknesses, but we'll get more into that in the analysis. The first gym battle we'll be able to use Curlia in will be against Grant and Solash City, and there, Curlia will do quite well against most trainers in there with Magical Leaf, including Grant Samora. However, the Tyrant would be a bit more troublesome with a strong job bite. After beating Grant, we travel to Shellar City and meet Karina, the fighting type gym leader. And as you can imagine, when we have a 4 times resistance, Curlia against her will win quite easily. Her fighting types don't stand a chance against you. Next up, Gardevoir will do well enough against Ramos' team, Clemens' team except for Magneton, Valorous' team except for Mawile, Olympia's team if you use Shadow Ball, and Wolfric's team with Focus Blast. As for your plethora of rivals or friends, Gardevoir will destroy all four of them. But on the bridge of Tierno, Trevor, and Shauna, you can easily take care of all three teams with a combination of Psychic, Moonblast, and Thunderbolt. And against Kalem or Serena and the Victory Road, you can meet their team with a combination of Moonblast, Psychic, and Shadow Ball. Thunderbolt can be a nice addition as well if they both have Vaporeon on your team if they chose Chessman at the start. Against Team Flare, Gardevoir does great as well, as you'd expect another evil team with Poison and Dark types. Now we have Moonblast for Darks and Psychic for the Poison types. So overall, we're having quite a good time with the evil team in this game. And just like the rest of Team Flare, their leader doesn't prove much more of a challenge. Gardevoir will destroy all of Lysander's plans, and we can then progress over to the Elite Four. Now, I am aware that the Kalos journey has been a bit messy in terms of the order, and I apologize for that. But as for the Elite Four, Gardevoir will do well against Drazna's team, Seabold's team, and Malvis' team. However, Wickstrom is not a favorable matchup. Then there is the champion Diantha, where Gardevoir will do well against everything except for Auroras with a combination of Moonblast, Psyshuck if possible, and Shadow Ball. And after the credits roll, we take a quick moment to face off against AZ, where Gardevoir will destroy his team with Shadow Ball and Psychic. So in Kalos X and Y, Gardevoir gets another great job well done. To keep things brief about the remix, most matchups are pretty much the same as well as encounters and everything else like that. But with the addition of the fairy typing, Team Aqua is a bit easier to deal with now, and so is Sydney and Drake of the Elite Four. However, Steven now has Mega Metagross, and that's pretty terrifying. You will also have access to Mega Gardevoir on this journey by helping the couple in Verdant Turf Town by smashing the rocks in Rust Turf Tunnel. So in Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, Gardevoir and by extension Mega Gardevoir will only do better than the original Ruby and Sapphire and Emerald. In Pokemon Ultra Sun and Moon, you can get access to Rolts by Island Scan on Sundays on Route 6 on Akala Island. However, in Ultra Sun and Moon, Rolts and its evolution line will struggle quite a bit between Lana and her Totem Arachnid with a base 80 leech life, Kiawe in his Totem Alolan Marowak in Flame Wheel and Hex, and Mallow still with her threatening Power Herb Solar Blade Totem Lorantis. Against Olivia, you can use Curlia with Magic Leaf for Lycanroc and Confusion for Anorith and Lilip. 
over on Ula Ula Island, we have Totem Togenomaru with Iron Head, which is not good for Gardevoir, and Totem Mimikyu with Shadow Ball is also not great. It's really not looking good for Gardevoir this game, and it's not getting much better anytime soon. For the Grand Trial against Nanu, Gardevoir will do amazingly, however, thanks to the Fairy Typing. Lastly, over on Pony Island, Gardevoir will make light work of Totem Kamo'o thanks to the Moonblaster Psychic. However, be wary that Totem Kamo'o is holding the Rosalie Berry, so be wary of that. The Rosalie Berry, pretty much what it does is it lessens the damage from Fairy Type attacks. After Kamo'o, there is Ultra Necrozma, and even though Necrozma becomes a Dragon type, it also has plus two in every stat, and Gardevoir will not be that 1v1. Against the Aether Paradise admins, Gardevoir will do well against Fabo of Shadow Ball, and against Lucimine's Milotic and Beware with Thunderbolt and Moonblast respectively. Gardevoir will also do good damage to Lilligant, Clefable, and Lopunny with either Moonblast or Psychic. Against Team Skull, they mainly have Poison and Dark types, which Gardevoir does quite well against Plumeria and her plethora of Poison types, but Gardevoir will have a slightly worse time with Guzma's bugs. In Minas Trial, we have to battle some Trial Captains to make the Rainbow Petal. In this trial, Gardevoir will do well against Minas Gramble and Rabambi, Lemus Team, Lana's Team and Ultra Moon except for Araquanid, Malo's Team, Kiawis Team, and Hiker David's Magmar. Lastly, for Minas Trial, there is the Totem Rabambi, which Gardevoir doesn't necessarily struggle with, but the battle is difficult as Rabambi starts with a plus one in every stat. But with Minas Trial out of the way, we move on to the Grand Trial against Hapu, where Gardevoir beats Hapu's entire team without really breaking much of a sweat. All that leaves us with now is the Elite Four and the title defense match. For the Elite Four, Gardevoir will do well against Olivia's team and Kahili's team. Acerilla having a full ghost team and heavy hitters makes things incredibly hard, and Malayne's steel types are not making it easy for a fairy friend. And for the final battle in Generation 7, we have Hao, where Gardevoir does well against Raichu, the Evolutions, Noivern, and Crabominable. The best starter for Gardevoir is Primarina in terms of matchup. For Ultra Sun and Moon, I'm gonna have to give Gardevoir a pass. It just doesn't really hold its own in this gen, which I think is going to be a common trend in this series. Gen 7 wasn't really the single run generation, but from a team perspective, Gardevoir can however help you out in many battles, but I think in Gen 7, I would pass it up. And that takes us to the last region for now, in Galar, where we can find Ralts and the Dappled Grove at level 13 to 15, only in the Fog. But from that point onwards, we can have Ralts throughout the entire game, which means that Ralts and down the line Gardevoir will do well against Milo's team with Confusion, Ness's team with Magical Leaf, Kabu's team with Psychic Stab, Bee's team with Psychic or Fairy Stab, Alistair's Gengar, but watch out as its typings are good against Gardevoir too, Melanie or Gordy's team is a Focus Blast, if Ray Drops were good to you, Pierce's entire team with Moonblast except for Skuntank, Ryan's team except for Duraludon, Marnie's team with Stab, Hop's team but be careful when it comes to his Snorlax, Oleana's team but watch out for G-Max Garboder, Ness's rematch team, B's rematch team, and Raihan's rematch team, except for G-Max Duraludon. Alistair, however, is a bad matchup. Lastly, there is Leon, who if he has Inteleon, is best for Gardevoir, considering you can Shadow Ball his Aegislash and Mr. Rhyme, and Moonblast his Dragapult and Haxorus. Lastly, you can pick off Inteleon and Charizard with a Thunderbolt. And that about wraps up Galar for this Pokemon, and it's definitely worth your while, both in terms of how early you get it, and how much it helps you throughout the game. The Psychic Fairy Typing is incredible, and makes for a very swift playthrough. Overall, when it comes to Gardevoir in-game, I'd say it's absolutely worth it. The Psychic Fairy Typing from Gen 6 onwards helps massively, but even just being a Psychic type back in the earlier gens, it still has a wide variety of moves to pick from, which makes Gardevoir an incredibly diverse traveling partner on your Pokemon journey. Overall, I'd say Gardevoir is pretty darn good. Well, that wraps up Gardevoir's debut. I hope you guys did enjoy this one as much as I had fun making it. Gardevoir is one of my favorite Pokemon, and I always love talking about it. What Pokemon do you guys want to see next, though? Let me know down below, and don't forget, let's crush 4,000 likes like always. If you enjoyed the video, why not leave a like and subscribe to my channel with notifications on? That way, you never miss an upload. If you want to support me further, consider following my Twitch, where I stream a lot of Pokemon content and all kinds of other Nintendo content like Zelda, Fire Emblem, and much more. Also, I've been reviewing every episode of My Hero Academia Season 4 over on Mystic Sage, so head over there if you're into that, too. I would love that a lot. Want to support me further further in Game Club Perks? Check out my Patreon. Daniel Leone, Lady Crimson, Memory Martin, The Lazy Leo, Matthew Young, Awesome Lego, Jarrett Weez Austin, Sodden Grider, Nigma 97 and Kermit117 did, and I wanted to thank them personally for going above and beyond. It means the world to me. I think I'm wrapped this up though. I'm Mr. Gumbrand, and I will see you in the future for more awesome Pokemon content.